Yeah, um, yeah, I'm Jenshin from AMO. So, um, yeah, I would like to talk about um, for fin for energy harvesting application. So, but it's with a different approach as uh, we have discussed in the last session. So last session, I think we talked a lot about the geometrical diodes and um, yeah, so that's something we are working on actually. So, um, but still we, um, yeah, it's a very challenging task in terms of fabrication. So we are still trying to make that working. So, but I'm talking about some other uh, approach which works at uh, lower frequency yeah. and so first I give a um, short introduction of AMO this some of you have already been there last time in in, in the green energy meeting so this is our building so um, actually if you can see this uh, map here so Aachen is here at very west of Germany so um, at very close to the three country border so here it's Belgium here is the Netherlands and here is Germany. So we, as you can see from here, so this tower actually located at this three country point here. Yeah. So you can see directly. So this is the building of Amo. So here you can see our clean room yeah, at the uh, first floor. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. I know there is a different uh, yeah, name for the, for the, for Aachen in different language, yeah like in French, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so uh, our directors are Max Lehm uh, and he holds a chair also in the uh, RWTH Aachen University uh, and uh, another uh, director is Misha Hono who is actually responsible for the financial stuff. So basically we are, um, yeah, some of you, uh, may not know we are not a research institute but we are a company yeah, we are a sme uh, but it, we are a non-profit company yeah? so which means that we are uh, we cannot do business but we are relying on research projects so in principle we are yeah so in or in in practice we are uh, indeed a research institute yeah so we have different uh, projects and uh, our key uh, technology is based basically um, traditionally silicon technology. And then uh, we are also have very strong background in nanofabrication and also new materials such as graphene. And now we have uh, Periscites, um, there are even a group on that and also sensor group and nanophotonics. So these are our main business, yeah. And uh, um, yeah, so this is our infrastructure. So as you can see, we have a lot of fabrication facilities, um, lithography, deposition, and also etching, uh, dry etching, wet etching. So if, uh, if you need some help on these uh, processes, you, yeah, we are happy to support. Yeah. And uh, in our group, uh, the name is Graphene Electronics, but also we, all, we also work on TMDCs here, yeah? like uh, molybdenum disulfide and so on, yeah. And we have uh, basically uh, four different pillars. So high frequency electronics, flexible electronics, uh, sensors and uh, wafer scale processing. So we have different Euro European projects and also German national projects, yeah. Mm, so. Then, uh, yeah, that's the topic today. So I want to give a um, introduction on graphene. Probably most of you already know. So why uh, we would like to use graphene for um, electronics. So basically it's due to uh, those properties listed here. So I think some of them are extremely, okay. Um, yeah, extremely relevant, for example, the high carrier mobility and uh, the, um, the thinness of the material and also um, the, so the high carrier mobility is very important for uh, high frequency electronics and the flexibility of the material and also the strong uh, bonding. This is re relevant for flexible electronics so that you can bend it without breaking it. Yeah, And also it's chemically inert. So, and um, yeah, so Another important thing is that it can be fabricated or synthesized uh, at large scale. So that's also what I want to um, address in the next slide, how we can actually um, 
do it, uh, uh, make graphene in large scale. So this is uh, actually because um, we, um, so the target of AMO is actually to, um, in end, to, to link the university and the industry. So we would like to do something which is in the end uh, scalable, yeah? So that's why this is very important for us. So the material should be um, scale, scalable to large scale. So um, of course, uh, so there are different methods to synthesize graphene, for example, mechanical exfoliation, which uh, has, yeah, has got gotten the Nobel Prize um, some years ago. And also like a chemical exfoliation or um, calico, uh, chemical exfoliation from graphene oxide, afterward you just reduce it back to graphene, yeah? So this is also possible. And also CVD, grown graphene, and uh, also epitaxial graphene or silicon carbide. So if you uh, have a look to all this method and uh, um, plot them on such an um, interesting uh, graph, then the x-axis is the price and y-axis is the quality of the graphene. So then it's very obvious that uh, CVD is actually a good option since uh, you can um, get very good quality from CVD uh, method. In the meantime, the price for production is also relatively low. Yeah, that's why we uh, state that uh, for, um, for our application, we are really focusing on uh, CVD graphene. And uh, so um, basically, but there is a drawback for CVD graphene, it's that you have to make the transfer, yeah? Because CVD, yeah, I forgot to explain that. You, normally it's grown on, uh, uh, for example, some uh, catalytic surface, for example, copper surface. Yeah, then uh, afterwards, if you want to make uh, electronic devices uh, from graphene, of course, you cannot do it on copper foil, yeah? So you have to transfer it to your target substrate. So. This additional step will make some, normally some residues on graphene. Yeah, so then, um, yeah, that's that's really a drawback from that. And also the scalability of such transfer process is really critical. For example, in one of our project, we are, our partners are developing tools which can do such a process so to transfer the graphene on large scale. Yeah, but still it's a challenging process. So as you can see here, uh, there are two different uh, approaches to get CVD graphene. So one is uh, on uh, copper, so on, on wafer, yeah. So this is the uh, eight inch wafer, I think. And uh, on top of that, uh, we deposited copper and then uh, we can grow um, graphene on top of that. So the advantage here is that in the end, you get a round shaped uh, uh, graphene, which you can transfer to a same size, um, wafer then you get a, yeah get a um, for example eight inch graphene wafer that you can do to your devices yeah and another approach is um, row to row process yeah so basically you just uh, um, put the this, this here is a graphene on copper foil and here is some polymer support so here these rows they provide some uh, uh, heat treatment, and then uh, there is some solution. So this uh, actually is uh, the transfer is doing all the time. Yeah. So you, you with this approach, you can really reach uh, a high throughput. Yeah. But uh, the with for some application, for example, a display application, this is really practical since you get a square in the end. Yeah. But for wafer, it's um, yeah, it's not so. Yeah. In the end, we have to cut them into small pieces and then uh, in, into wafer size and then to the transfer, yeah. So I, I just want to introduce what is available in, a, uh, in terms of large scale graphene. And uh, <coughs> maybe here I want to uh, introduce afterwards, uh, what can we do with this graphene after the transfer? So here uh, I want to show you how we can make a graphene based devices. So this is really a, um, so we get a uh, graphene on top of the substrate and then we um, coat the graphene with resist. And then we do a lithography step to open these windows, which uh, is intended for uh, electrical contacts. And then we get rid of the graphene here. Yeah, so this, um, so the graphene is etched with oxygen plasma. And afterwards we deposit metal into these uh, windows 
and then uh, we do a lift off. So up, so uh, after this etching step, the edge of graphene here is exposed. Yeah, and then after do a lift off, you get these electrodes contacted to graphene only at the edge. And afterwards, uh, we coat the uh, this sample with uh, resist again, and then we do an exposure to uh, protect the area that we want to leave in the end. Yeah, then we etch those unwanted graphene, then in the end, we get the channel like this. So if you have a look to the side, then it's something like that. So here we can um, realize um, edge contact directly with the resist mask. So why we would like to make edge contact with graphene? That's an interesting question, but I will uh, talk about that later on. But here, I just want to show you how we can make a graphene device. So after this step, you get the electric contact to graphene and also you can apply. So the substrate usually we, we use is silicon, silicon oxide substrate, yeah? So then we can use the substrate here as a, um, a gate, a global back gate to tune the um, resistance of the graphene. And um, yeah, so if you have a look to, this is a cross section of the device. And then um, if you tune the gate, voltage and the current flowing through. So basically we apply a, car, a voltage between these two electrodes and measure the current here. And then in the meantime, we sweep the voltage here. And then you can see a field effect from this device. So basically this is so-called graphene-based field effect device. I don't call it a transistor because this cannot be switched off. Yeah. So this, this is uh, uh, due to the, um, the band gap of graphene. So there is no band gap actually. So that's why we cannot switch it off. So it's really uh, in the end, you get such a V-shaped uh, uh, transfer curve. And also uh, you get the uh, output curve like this, yeah. So, um, which you can see you reach some saturation, but it's really difficult. You have to go to very high field, yeah. And uh, normally you also observe some kinks in the, um, in the output curve of such a device. So, um, yeah, so I think after many years investigation on such uh, field effect devices, um, people realize that it's really difficult to make use of this uh, uh, graphene based field effect transistors. So um, we try to uh, go uh, in another direction, which is what I'm going to introduce here, a uh, graphene uh, based diode. Yeah. So since the topic of this talk is about um, uh, energy harvesting. So we all know we have talked a lot that a diode is needed for energy harvesting. So here I'm going to introduce how we can make a, a diode based on graphene. So here it's an introduction for the diode and everyone knows. Um, yeah, it's a, a very uh, basic device. And um, traditionally for uh, RF, uh, for um, radio frequency diodes, there are different ways to make it. For example, you can do it with uh, silicon to make a short key diodes, uh, but this is non sim film technology, which means that you are really limited to the to the silicon. Yeah, you can you can only do it with silicon. Yeah, then in the end, uh, the integration might be if you want to use any other materials, then it's uh, not possible. And another approach is to use this meme diode. I think David also mentioned that. But the drawback here is that uh, for the meme diode, um, you you see that actually it's also in the meantime. Uh, parallel capacitor, yeah? so uh, parallel plate capacitor, so that the parasitic capacitance between these two electrodes actually is really limiting the frequency response. Yeah, that, that's why we would like to see if there is any other option, uh, if we want to use graphene, then we um, came across with this paper uh, in 2016. So it's uh, from a group in Stuttgart in Germany. So basically they use a, a metal and insulate and graphene such a structure to make um, a diode, yeah? And then you can see this is the behavior from such a, a diode. Uh, I think the red curve is the current. So I think here they, they basically reverse the bias. It should be here, should be forward bias and here should be reverse bias. So it's a typical and um, asymmetrical um, curve from this structure. 
And what we have improved here is that we um, try to uh, make this process scalable, which is always our target to um, use CVD graphene. So here, what they have used is uh, exfoliated graphene. It's just a single device. And we also used the alum uh, atomic layer deposition for the oxide. But uh, we all know if we want to deposit oxide on graphene, it's really difficult because on top of graphene, there is no dialing bonds. And uh, yeah, it's, for the, it's difficult for the nucleation. So that's why we try to reverse this structure to put titanium at the button and then to grow a titanium oxide on top of that uh, so that we can use uh, atomic layer deposition. And then, uh, yeah, that's, that's, we end up with such structure. So at the button is the aluminum titanium uh, electrode and then between is a titanium oxide. So the purple part is graphene and then the electrode uh, contact to graphene. Yeah? And then you can get uh, such a typical uh, diode behavior. And uh, this is also a work together with the uh, University of Pisa. So they did some simulation. Gianluca uh, Fiori, yeah. So they did some uh, simulation on this band structure of such a diode. So it proved that there is a so-called bios induced a barrier lower in which uh, enabled such a, a good performance of the diode. So basically you see that this, this uh, barrier on the graphene side, which uh, it's actually depending on the bios that you are using. Yeah. So for the forward bios, you can see this barrier is uh, much lower. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we also did some benchmarking. I think uh, David also introduced those parameters like asymmetry, linearity, and uh, responsivity. So basically this, uh, so they are quite um, comparable to other technologies. So the green is what has been, uh, is for this work and the rest they are uh, from, from other technology. Yeah? So yes, yeah, so asymmetry is a little bit lower, yeah, but uh, the rest they are really, uh, much better than the other technology. Frequency, I will show later on. <laughs> yeah, now we come to the RF part. So we uh, use this diode for the um, uh, communication application. So basically, uh, it's um, we want to get this. Uh, um, yeah, so to use it as a rectifier. Yeah? So um, in the middle, this is the diode that we have just talked about. And uh, on the input side, we have the AC, sig AC signal, which is biased. And at the output side, we measure the, um, the, the DC signal, yeah? So here you can see the x-axis is the RF input power and uh, the y-axis is the uh, DC output uh, voltage. And you can see, this diode can work up to 50 gigahertz and uh, with responsi responsivity of uh, uh, sensitivity, I think this is 1.1 volt per watt. So the watt here is the RF power and the volt is the DC voltage. Yeah? But unfortunately for other technologies, they don't have such a measurement done. So, um, so we, we could not do such a benchmarking directly. Yeah? And with this uh, diode, uh, we are not limited to a single device. We are also we also expanded to a circuit even. So um, we have an in-house uh, monolithic microwave integrated circuit. So basically here you have the diode that we have talked about. And also we integrate it with capacitor, inductor and resistor. Yeah, in the end, you can really realize the communication circuit like uh, I have shown here. For example, a six port receiver, which can work at uh, Wi-Fi frequency and also some mixer and uh, power detector. I think, I believe they can work uh, to up to 70 gigahertz, yeah. So these are all collaboration with uh, RWTH Aachen University. So basically they are uh, the expert on circuits. And uh, so we also actually did some benchmarking with the CMOS technology. So this, uh, so I mean, with this circuit, so they are somehow um, comparable or even out, uh, outperforming the performance of the CMOS technology, CMOS based uh, communication circuits. So um, yeah, for the communication, we also need antenna. Yeah. So um, we were thinking if it's possible to also make this antenna out of graphene, then we can do everything with graphene, yeah? I don't know if it's advantage or disadvantage, <laughs> but uh, there is a special advantage of uh, graphene is that, uh, so 
if we use uh, such a dipole antenna, so in the middle, this part actually is graphing, yeah. Then um, this, and so the x axis is the length of the antenna, which uh, is the dimension of the antenna in the end. And uh, also the y axis is the resonance frequency of the antenna. So as you can clearly see, uh, this uh, curve is from graphene antenna, and this one is from a uh, metal antenna. For example, here is gold. You see, uh, for the same res uh, resonant frequency, the graphene has much smaller. Um, dimension. So this is uh, very important um, for um, for the integration. Yeah, so that uh, you can realize on chip communication. So in one of our project, uh, which is also a partner project from Green Energy, which it's called uh, Viplash. So we are actually working on such antenna. An additional feature of such antenna is that we can tune the um, Fermi level of uh, graphene so that in the end this uh, uh, oscillation frequency of the antenna can also be tuned yeah so in the end we can realize a tunable um, uh, antenna so everything is uh, in this uh, yeah it, it's investigating this project if you want to know something more you can go to the post of Kunta or Elena I think both of them are here um, yeah and then, um, yeah, so this is a little bit uh, out of scope. So we can also use such a diode for actually photosensing. So what you need to do is to put uh, quantum dots on top of this kind of uh, diode. Yeah, then this uh, quantum dots, uh, this is called colloid uh, quantum dots. Then they can absorb light and uh, because the absorption from graphene is really limited there. Yeah, it's, um, it's basically transparent. So that that's why we need some other quantum dots on top to absorb light. Then, um, yeah, then especially for the, it's it, this kind of uh, photosensor is especially useful for infrared detection, yeah. And uh, then of course we have another project which is working on this, uh, um, photo sensing based on such a sensor. So it's called MISA project. Here we would like to have uh, multi spectrum sensing, for example, with different uh, quantum dots with different uh, absorbing wavelengths. And then we can realize such a um, multi spectrum uh, sensing. And in the end, we would like to uh, use CMOS to do this. Um, so in the CMOS, there is some artificial intelligence uh, processing. Yeah, we are not expert on those. Then in the end, we can realize some, uh, um, for example, some uh, pattern recommendation, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a charge transfer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a paper on, I think, on this, um, yeah, on ACS Nano, yeah, on this, yeah. And uh, yeah, so um, I think we have talked about a lot about this uh, um, metal insulated graphene diode. So now we go one step further um, to see, um, yeah, we have talked about the edge contact, yeah. So, um, so the, Normally, uh, if you want to contact graphene, there are different uh, configurations. For example, you can contact from the top or from the button. So they are usually there, uh, we call it side contact. And then you can also make a contact to the edge. So the advantage of edge contact is that uh, the, the electron, the carriers that are more efficiently injected to the channel in this case, because they are, somehow bonded to this uh, contacts yeah but for the uh, top or bottom contact they are somehow um, for example uh, it's uh, there is always a, a gap so it's somehow happening with tunneling yeah between the metal and the contact because uh, on top of graphene there is no uh, no available bonds here yeah. so that's why we normally would like to make the edge contact in order to reduce the contact resistance yeah that's also answered the, uh, the question before and uh, yeah, so people also did some experiment. For example, uh, this is graphene and on top and at bottom of it, it's a boron nitride, which normally boosts the mobility of the graphene, yeah. Then they make the elect uh, edge contact to such structure. And this, I think this is the first paper that has been demonstrated that. 
Um, yeah, so then they proved, of course, uh, this reduced the contact resistance a lot. But uh, what I have shown in the very beginning, th that process, so we don't need uh, this. Um, uh, so it's uh, really a simple process that we can use the resistor mask to make the edge contact. Yeah. And the reason why um, I would like to talk the edge contact is that what if we put uh, um, oxide layer between this uh, graphene and the electrode? Yeah? Do, you, do we still get a diode or what will it behave? Yeah? Uh, behave um, yeah so then we try to make such a structure and uh, in the end it indeed um, behave like a diode and we call it a one-dimensional uh, metal insulated graphene diode the reason is that uh, here if you imagine uh, along this line so this uh, this junction is actually only a one-dimensional line yeah so um, yeah then I would like to introduce a little bit how we make it, yeah, or how Andreas made it. <laughs> and this is a substrate with CVD graphene, and we encapsulate it with aluminum oxide on top, and then we do the etching to remove this and this area, and then we deposit the um, electrode on this side. So this is OMI contact on this side. And then we cover everything with titanium oxide, yeah. Then so that at the edge you also get titanium oxide. And afterwards we deposit another electrode on this side. And then in the end you get uh, this one D junction. And uh, yeah, I think I removed that slide with the IV curve, but believe me, we got a diode. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, it's rectifying. And the, the advantage of such a diode is that. Um, Actually, you don't, uh, for, for example, this kind of diode, you get uh, still such a parallel um, capacitor, yeah? So which is in the end limiting, so between the graphene and the, 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 this titanium electrode here. So in the end, it would still limiting this uh, frequency performance, but for such a one dimensional diode, so this uh, uh, um, between this graphene and this titanium electrode. So it's only a, a point contact somehow, yeah? So that you don't, so this uh, capacitive, uh, parasitic capacitance here is really minimized, yeah? So that's why it can perform um, theoretically to 2.4 terahertz. And um, so we did the calculation, but the, of course, there is some, uh, so in ideal case, we consider such a, um, so they are perpendicular to each other, but uh, in the end, uh, during the process, you always get some angle and something that you still get some um, parasitic uh, effect between these two electrodes, yeah? So in the end, uh, we have demonstrated this um, uh, up to 170 gigahertz. So this is really a rectification. So uh, here you can see a, bi a bow tie antenna, which is connected to this uh, diode in the middle. Yeah. And then uh, we uh, shine a terahertz signal in free space and this uh, antenna is catching this signal and rectified here in the diode. And then this is the response here. So it's really up to 170 gigahertz. So this is limited actually by the measurement setup. So yeah. So it could be even higher. So if I think Andreas has a poster here, yeah, right there. You can talk to him if you're interested. Yeah, that's basically uh, what I would like to talk. Mm, it's yeah, it's a lot of information, but uh, yeah, I try to make it in half an hour, I think. Yeah. Uh, so basically the um, the take home information is that uh, graphene can be um, produced with uh, uh, with large scale with a CVD method. And um, graphene-based transistor is not ideal. So for digital application, definitely it's not useful, but it might be useful for um, analog uh, application, yeah. And the graphene insulate graphene diode, uh, metal insulate graphene diode, it's uh, useful to uh, realize rectification. And uh, with this one-dimensional configuration, we can go for even higher frequency. So in the end, a rectifier with uh, based on graphene it's demonstrated up to 170 gigahertz yeah so yeah that's uh, the acknowledgement yeah we work with different uh, partners here yeah that's it thank you very much <laughs>